And you're welcome back. And our second topic is Agenda 111. That's the Akufuado government's health infrastructure program versus, quote, abandoned hospitals. Is it an issue of priorities? Now, some three weeks ago, the president broke ground for the commencement of his ambitious Agenda 111 project. And this is aimed at delivering health care access to Ghanaians, particularly in districts where there are no hospitals. Many questions have been raised about the project from issues relating to viability to financing and even really if the completion date of 18 months is realistic. Well, we here at TV3 and 3FM and on other media general platforms uh, put out a series of stories on, quote, abandoned hospitals. And these have to do with hospitals that have been in work. The project had started, but nothing had been going on. Some had been closed and opened. Others opened, no healthcare professionals and the like. And we've had a number of revelations in this uh, pursuit in, in relation to the issues I mentioned. Today, our guests, uh, still we have uh, Honorable Suhini, MP for Tamale North, with us, uh, Joseph Pemka, Honorable, former Deputy Attorney General and former MP for Tempani. And we also are joined today by the Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Titus Bayou. Gentlemen, thank you once again for staying with us and some of you have already sent your messages and one of them says name the hospitals that was to me that's from Kwame Apia name the hospitals uh, another one uh, says why those who started those hospitals didn't finish the so-called abandoned hospitals when were they started and when are or were the completion dates where are the remaining amounts of monies released for the hospitals to start we need answers so we'll be bringing you a mashup of that but let me just take preliminary uh, comments um, i'll start off with uh, honorable suhini so the agenda 111 has um, you know, still is still in the news, still trending, and still a major issue for many. This week, I don't want to say it's because of TV3, but that would be a nice credit to take. Mm -hmm. Some of the hospitals were opened. I think the one at time was opened, and then we saw a visit to the Afari Hospital, which is still the military hospital, still yeah. under That's construction right. after we raised that. And then we know that there's some uh, work to address the Shama Hospital as well. Your, your initial thoughts? Well, my um, first um, statement will be one of com commendation uh, to TV3 for doing a fantastic job uh, of highlighting, um, you know, the waste that um, would have occurred or occasioned, uh, uh, but for your, you know, reportage that is like you are being report i mean like you are reporting again that is seeing some of these facilities being put to use because if, if they are abandoned we need to understand that uh, it is cost to the uh, taxpayer and and health is wealth and you visit almost every health facility in this country uh, weekdays and almost every health facility is full to capacity private and public it tells you the need for more health uh, you know, facilities. And so when you have the taxpayers' money being put to uh, uh, you know, use by way of providing these facilities and they are not serving the purpose, you should obviously be worried. And that is why I think that we must commend TV3 for highlighting this. And it has become necessary because of you know, government's rhetoric and sloganeering once again uh, that they have engaged in in relation to uh, their intention to build uh, 101 hospitals in districts that did not have hospitals. I say sloganeering because that's what this government is noted for. Um, rhetorics and sloganeering. Um, first of all, it is important for them to be reminded that it was a campaign promise in 2016. In their manifesto, they indicated that they were going to uh, construct hospitals in all districts without hospitals. They lived four years in office and almost forgot about that promise. In fact, the only time the president remembered that districts needed to have hospitals was when COVID hit. And in one of his outings, he promised an Agenda 88 hospitals and said they were going to be done in um, the districts without hospitals. That was a belated 
you know, um, um, move to fulfill a campaign promise too late in the day. Uh, fortunately for him, his party won and he has a second term. And so maybe um, it is uh, a belated implementation of a promise that he made and forgot. But then again, you are reminded of the double standards in the publication of artist impressions. When in the past, um, you know, even with projects that they could verify in the Green Book, they simply condemned it to being an artist impression that did not deserve any support at all or commendation. Today, you find them, interestingly, on social media, sharing artist impression of this 111, even before, you know, uh, the contractors moved to site and demanding praise for those artistic impressions. But it is all well and good if the intentions are right, because apart from the fact that we have these abandoned hospitals that should not have been abandoned, that should have been put to good use, we still need some more you know, health facilities in our country. So if the intention is really to improve health care, um, the, 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 the agenda will not be bad in itself. But because of the record of this government, you begin to wonder if the intention is really to improve health care or just to engage in uh, procurement politics that will lead to um, another level of corruption like we have seen in many of you know their uh, undertakings so, Look, so, well, if, so if, I'll, if, I'll come back because, to you in detail on that if, no so just just just, that just just so that I, I i i don't leave it hanging mm -hmm. if the agenda is to improve healthcare, you will not have them abandoning facilities that are 90 percent complete so in some cases, 99% complete. Because you would think that they will focus on that to improve healthcare. The UGMC will be operating optimally. You know, the Ridge Hospital will be operating optimally. The phase two of the Ridge Hospital will be functioning. The sort that he cut at the General Hospital, for example, you know, will see some attention because that hospital has been shut down. The Shama people uh, that he assured of a clinic about a year ago and cut sword and said money was ready and construction was not going to delay will get some attention. But when you see all of that not getting attention, all of that ignored, and uh, we are all moved to discuss you know, this Agenda 111 with a lot of question marks in terms of procurement and, 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 and monies that have already been spent, you wonder really if the intention is to improve healthcare or just to engage in another you know, procurement uh, uh, politics that will lead to uh, the high levels of corruption that we see everywhere. Dr. Bay, you're looking at the number of hospitals that uh, you know, are outstanding. I have at least to start with even a list of just 11 that we went round and checked and reported on. But we know that there are so much more. I know the question may have been asked you already that should we have finished these hospitals, but is it about how we weigh our priorities? Maybe we need to prioritize which districts actually need them and provide those hospitals and then of course complete those already started. Uh, good morning, Jifa. Uh, good morning to our, our viewers. And let me say a very good morning to all the dedicated and hardworking health workers in Ghana, especially my colleague doctors. Uh, I will just start by saying that to us, the medical association and medical practitioners in general, any addition to the infrastructure is very welcome uh, because the deficit is huge. The gap is huge. So any single drop in that ocean, we will appreciate it. And to that extent, we commend government for bringing this initiative. But the very sad note, and then all week I've been following your news on these abandoned facilities, and it's very disheartening. I tried asking questions for some of them that have been completed and commissioned and not working. Then you ask a question, is it an issue of priority? Is it an issue of human resource? Is it an issue of administrative impediment? Uh, in fact, I have several questions on my mind that maybe in the course of this program I'll ask. And since I have very senior <laughs> colleagues and politicians here, they might help us answer those questions. Because if you come to the issue of priorities, I think everybody accepts health to be a priority. And building hospitals <coughs> is useful in any form because of at least three reasons. One, it brings access to the people. 
it brings proximity of health to the people. So that if you have a hospital in any district, it reduces the distance that people have to travel to get to another facility. Now, if you look at the type of facilities that were lying waste, the equipment, the design, the structure, and you compare it to some of the facilities we are using right now, it will tell you that if you were a health worker working in one of these new facilities, you'd be very excited because you have what it needs to provide the services that you are trained to provide. So it's very sad that we will see them lying that way. But the questions that are lingering in my mind is that why do we abandon them and why do we start new ones? We welcome the new ones, but we also want these to be completed. Like I'm saying, I don't think it should be an either or. We want both. Push these ones into function now. And if you can complete these 111 hospitals, uh, 111 hospitals within the stipulated time, we'll be very happy. We, however, have some significant concerns when it comes to the human resource. And then when we get there, we'll yes. discuss it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, on the priority bit, I think the action of our decision makers, and here I'm referring to those who call the shots in deciding where and when to build a hospital or to start a new facility, send some signal to us, the ordinary workers, health service care, service delivery workers, and the ordinary Ghanaian, that is it really an issue of priority or is it more appealing to initiate new projects? And if it is more appealing to initiate new projects, is it just that so that I can complete this one that it is known that I initiated, I completed, and I get credit? Or is the procurement process more uh, rewarding if you initiate a new project than if you complete an old project? How is our contractual terms? That makes it such that when there's a change in government, whatever has been, begun, has been started cannot be finished. And the final question that is on my mind as far as this issue is concerned is the human resource bit. Why are governments more interested in infrastructure, which are very good, don't get me wrong, we need infrastructure, than the human resource component? Because if you are doing such a massive project, you want to see a massive human resource laid down. You can raise a hospital in eight months, 18 months, if you have the money. Question is, can you raise the needed caliber of staff over the same period without planning? And I'll give you some figures later so that we see the number of staff needed for these facilities. Okay. Honorable Pemka, the floor is open to you. So there are questions about whether these hospitals, and some of you can see them on our screens, is they are not in use yet because of what? Administrative bottlenecks or it's not exactly an immediate priority or funding? Thank you very much. <clears throat> First of all, let me say that some of the facilities and some of the reports that we got prior to this were exaggerated, some. And I'm saying this because there were even photos of some of their facilities, um, equipment being abandoned, the mercy of the weather, and etc. And when cross-checking was done, it was ascertained that those were not actually equipment abandoned to the weather and, and all that. Some of them were not completed but the impression had been created that they had been completed and they were abandoned and all that. And, and I, th there's one particular project, I think, uh, done by Erojet in the Ashanti region. The Afari military Afari. hospital. Yeah, I, mean, I think that was like a big, it. that was a big bone of yes. contention. contention exactly. But the truth of the matter is if government doesn't provide counterpart funding so that it can complete the project, because what the deputy defense minister said was they're supposed to add an additional amount partly because of the multiple relocations of this project that hasn't been done uh, how can we move forward so yes that's that's what i'm just i'm just i'm just striving but initially the report wasn't what we are talking about now until the deputy defense minister clarified the issue that was not it the issue was that it had been completed and it was abandoned but that has not been it because even Eurojet issued a statement in the course of the week to clarify that indeed the project had not been uh, completed. I recall, and I don't know whether Honorable Suhini also recalls, that before the seventh parliament rose, that particular issue came before us. There was, there was a, a request for funding from government of Ghana, the counterpart funding, to finance that. You know, but we couldn't take that motion before we rose. You know? So I, I have actually followed that, that particular project keenly and I knew that it wasn't completed. So the reportage out there was as though government had abandoned it, but that was not correct. 
Again, generally, government's focus is to ensure that where these projects have been completed, they are put to use so that uh, we can reap the benefits that we are supposed to derive from that investment that we've put. But you see, again, there's something, Jifa, that is a demotivating factor to uh, succeeding governments, continuing projects of uh, government that have like their, their, their predecessors. And I have to state it this morning in categorical terms that that is killing the, the nation or the state Ghana. You have a situation where a government inherits a project and then maybe at foundation level or at length moves to organize resources to complete it. And then, unfortunately, you have, because of politics, those that initiated it will come out to say that, point out a single project of yours. Point out one project. Uh, the one that you are talking about, we initiated it. You, you are not the owners of it. So point out your own. You have taken this amount of money. What have you used it for? When, in fact, projects that the preceding government initiated and left office, some of them were maybe 30%, 40% and all that, and then the government that has come into office has to organize resources to complete it. Every credit, the, the, the ones that initiated it want to take every credit for initiating it I, and asking the other government what you have done. I beg your pardon, Honorable Pemka, but there is nothing wrong with acknowledging that this project was started by a previous government and we are continuing, continuing in the spirit of the social contract that is for the greater good. And I think maybe the MPP lost a good opportunity some time back. Remember the N1 highway. Remember how former President Mills commissioned that highway and brought former President Kufo to say that he had done all this groundwork to bring the MCA compact. This road is now complete. I must commission it with you. Nothing has stopped the current president from doing the same. Probably that would even be a political masterstroke. But he has chosen Jifa. to commission Jifa. other projects, not these hospitals, for instance, Jifa. on his own. There have been projects that have not been commissioned because it means it is former president Mohammed's name on it. T3, for instance, I'm just giving these as examples, is not to say that um, it is right that it is not right that a government should initiate its own project. But I think sometimes the, the, the successive governments have also not walked in the, in the path of you others. Not, you're, you see, you're, you're not looking at the reality on the ground. You see, you, don't want, you to, have to win You power. don't want to do it so that first someone all, will use it to campaign. First of all, you have to, you have to win power <laughs> in order to govern the country. All right? Yeah. Then you are governing the country. And you are doing continuing with projects that the previous government initiated. And all that the hawks will tell you in their commentary <laughs> is that you have done nothing. <laughs> all that you are doing are their projects. I have, look, keenly I have monitored this. And I'm saying that <clears throat> governments will come, governments will go. The nation Ghana remains. But the interest that we have, if we don't take care, that will be the reason why we'll continue to run a circuit show that will not take us anywhere. And I'm saying this because if you listen to commentary in the last months, any project that is completed anywhere, you want to say anything, they say, oh, Mahama secured funding and left. What, where is yours? Then the new patriotic party comes out to say that, look, there are 111 districts without hospitals. Therefore, as part of our contribution in the health sector, we're going to put up hospitals in the 111. Then the same people who are saying, this project is Mohammed's project. That is Mohammed's project. They are saying that, have you completed what we initiated and you want to do new ones? <laughs> Double speak. Double speak. No. So this government says that, look, we will complete them. But we are doing 111 others in 111 districts without hospitals, for which my district is a beneficiary. And all we need to do is that, yes, we should complete the, uh, the ones that have not been completed. I agree. That is true because... Those ones were not constructed with money from the pocket of Mahama. It's Ghana's money. And the same way, the ones that we are going to construct will not be constructed with money from His Excellency's pocket. It is Ghana's money. But we must make sure that we don't politicize these things. These are things that will be legacies. Remember that if 111 succeeds in its entirety, it will be the biggest single investment in the health sector since independence. That's a fact. Because it is close to $2 billion, the entire cost of the 111 project. So 
What I can say is that in running commentary on this, we should try to look at it as a national issue, but not political party issue. Okay, let me, uh, uh, let me bring you to a few issues and I'll stay with you for a bit, uh, Honorable Klemka, and then we'll take a break and come back. So, um, Dr. Bey, you raised questions about the human resource capacity. So we know that there are many doctors, many nurses who are not employed. We know. Yeah, yeah, and yet, uh, the I... president says he's going to employ some, or the country, to be specific, will employ some 20,000 and more health personnel when these hospitals are complete. The current doctors we have, they've not, and, and nurses and other healthcare professionals, have not been fully employed. How do we Jifa, take him on his uh, word? I, I know my brother is here, and he, he will be able to speak to what I'm going to tell you. Check who posted. 2016 batch of nurses, 2017 batch of nurses, 2018 batch of nurses. Check which government posted them. They, they were backlogs when we came to power of nurses who had completed school and were waiting at home for two years and more and who had not been posted at all. Cross check, please. It is very clear that on record we posted these nurses and then others again will be posted uh, uh, this uh, next year. To make sure that we expand that, if you look at the the, the idea of I mean reintroducing this this uh, allowance in the nursing training to motivate many more people to get in there and get educated and all that, and the expansion in the health infrastructure in those training schools to absorb more, that all that are meant to to to, to train more human resource and and discharge them into the system to man the various uh, health facilities and etc. So government is equally committed to the human resource. As, as Dr. B. U. has rightly pointed out, you can have all the magnificent buildings that you can think about. If there are no persons who are professionals to manage these facilities, they become white elephants. And with time, they fade. So you need that. And that is why government is so much committed to training nurses, training uh, more doctors, and making sure that these professionals come out to manage this. And not just training them, but motivating them with good incentives. I was about to uh, raise <laughs> that, that because just, just getting the healthcare professionals yes. to be in those hospitals don't motivate is simply them. not enough. I was reading, I, I don't know whether it was yesterday or the day before, I was reading an article, and they were talking about the level of attrition from Kolebu, mm -hmm. number of nurses and other health professionals who have left their jobs and gone abroad to seek better uh, opportunities and all that. I, I was reading it yesterday. So as I said, government is not just going to put up infrastructure. It's not going to just train the personnel and discharge them there, but put in place to motivating factors and circumstances that will attract and you have and a plan for that because it wasn't detailed in the president's speech. He just so, said we will provide uh, twenty. Uh, um, we will provide jobs for twenty thousand healthcare prof uh, professionals. Yes, Madam, Ghana, will Madam, become, Ghana will become a health hub because then people can come in for health care here across the sub-region, but nothing specifically about if I, Those ones, you, the, when, when the president is delivering a speech, he gives you the skeletal presentation. All those de the, the details are found in policy documents of the ministry that, 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 that you later implement. And when you bring to parliament for approval and et cetera, then you are able to push through your human resource development and then incentives. Uh, uh, motivation and, and wages for, for, for staff and all that. So it is true, government is putting in place measures and efforts to ensure that that is done. But as I indicated, I can tell you that uh, we, uh, doctor is highly professional in what he's doing, but myself and Shuhini, we, we can say anything, but in the end we will say some politics. But you are the ones making decisions it, for them. Absolutely. That is the challenge. And so you cannot absolutely. say that. I agree. You are making decisions no, I'm for saying them. That. I'm saying that. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm saying is that they will always run their professional commentary. But in the end, we, whatever we say, we end up lacing it with some politics. That's what I'm putting across. Mm. And I'm saying that Agenda 111 is a death knell to the aspirations of my brother and his party. <laughs> he knows really? that if Agenda 111 succeeds in its entirety, Goodness. that 111 <clears throat> hospitals in 111 districts will be unmatched 
in the history of health sector since independence. Then how would you respond to those who then question, and that's why I raised, is it an issue of priorities? You want to win power, so you give yours more priority than the project that <laughs> probably they started or started even before the you NDC see, came to office. that is again where the problem is. If there's a particular standing fund for a project that was initiated by the previous government, it becomes very easy to go ahead and, and complete it. But if there is no standing fund, government will have to find a source, either a loan or internally generated funds and all that. And there are competing interests. But you found your two In billion to build Agenda 111. Please. It has not been stated categorically that two billion is sitting in an account for implementation. Well, it's of true, one that, one. but that's the cost. It has not been stated. But that it, is the cost. The, the, and the deal had gone to parliament. Yes, and it will it, it, definitely the funding will be sought to, to implement it. <laughs> what I have put across is that look, as you indicated in the Eurojet project at uh, Afari, it's very clear that there's a counterpart funding mm -hmm. by the government of Ghana, which government will have to look for money in the midst of competing interests and the devastation of COVID-19, and etc. Government will have to look for funds. People, sometimes we have to put it in context. What context do we put it? That in the circumstances of the competing interest that we have in the various sectors, government, look, it is not only health sector projects that you have standstill. Educational infrastructure. There are certain projects in education. I recall that certain projects were initiated under President Kufuo which were completed uh, when, when this government came to power. Those ones are there. Housing, even housing, and all that. We have, we, have, we have those things. That culture, as a nation, we have to put a blueprint and maybe give timelines to these things so that whether a government changes or not, whoever comes within a certain time must complete those other projects and move on. That, 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 if that is, becomes a national policy and put in the National Development Planning Commission's plan and it is binding on any other person, then we can move on from there. But so long as discretion is granted to any individual who comes to power to run the country in accordance with the dictates of our constitution, that discretion must always be exercised. It mustn't be capricious anyway. Mm, all right. Let me read some messages and then yeah. I'll come to Dr. Bayo. We'll oh, take I'll a break and then I'll come, yeah. I'll come to you. I'll come to your novice <laughs> because I know you have a lot to say. Um, uh, this one um, says, it's from David Aid, who says, as we are speaking, there are doctors who have written the medical and dental exams with their results not in and sitting at home for seven months as a result of government's failure to constitute the medical and dental board. Is the board now constituted? It is constituted. Okay, because and the I results, remember the results have since been declared. Been declared. So you okay. can check that out. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Um, this one says uh, from David Edu, Agenda 111, when there are abandoned hospitals, the prudent step is for government to complete the abandoned projects and then continue with their own agenda where uh, they deem it fit. Uh, my regards to Honorable Suhini. Uh, this one from... Okay, so these are still from the old, old mm. messages. But thank you uh, very much for sending them. Yes, so yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Bayo, the issue of the healthcare uh, professionals to be employed. Yeah, um, yeah. just before I tackle okay, that, I sure. think some small revelation from my uh, brother here mm. will leave the, all of us thinking as a nation. Because uh, I think it's giving us a peek into the mind of, the politician and how they what influences what they do mm -hmm. because if they have to from what we are hearing meaning that if you start a project you don't complete it another person comes to complete it then the credit becomes an issue political credit and because they need power first to govern uh, that is a big one does that and i can now understand why you would want to initiate a project and want to finish within 18 months because you want to try and finish it so that you, you can leave. use it for the next campaign. Yes, oh, <laughs> but more importantly for us, so that it's available for use, because it means that it is possible that okay. if there's a switch, these things may not be completed. Okay. I'm going to just make an appeal on behalf of all doctors, healthcare, healthcare workers, yeah. and the ordinary Ghanaian, that the Ghanaian electorate, I think we are becoming very discerning now, and we, we appreciate issues because there's improved communication. And so I would encourage the politicians not to be too scared about just the credit bit. Because as the media carries the story, we are also able to see. Because if you have a facility abandoned in my village that was started by another government, 
and they could not finish. And this government has finished it, and my people are getting health care. I don't think they, the fact that someone just initiated me, every credit will go to him. At some point, we'll appreciate all the effort that is being put in. So uh, they should not be scared to complete the project. They should try and complete them. We'll give the due <laughs> acknowledgement. We'll give the credit it is due. <laughs> it is due based on the extent of completion. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the ordinary uh, Ghanaian is the beneficiary. The other issue is that he talked about uh, nursing allowance and all of that, mm -hmm. which is helpful. But I'll use that to start my discussion on the human resource. You see, that is helpful. There's no doubt about that. But it has not necessarily increased intake into the nursing schools. If anything at all, it's even limiting the intake. Because government's intake then is now based on how many people can I pay this allowance. And here we have with such a massive infrastructure project, which we welcome 100%. And I am, tonight when I go, I'm going to go on my knees and pray, and pray that we should try and complete this. Uh, let all of us support it as a nation. Let's offer any guidance we can give so that these projects are completed before this government leaves power. So it doesn't suffer maybe an ill fate like others have suffered. Mm -hmm. But the human resource bit is very we critical. We can't train people within the within time that frame. short period. And I'm just going to give you some figures. For instance, and this is the Ghana Health Services own policy on promotions and appointment of specialists, dated June 2018. For a district hospital, they will require a minimum of 11 specialists to practice. A minimum of two senior specialists to practice. Now, if you take that these 111 hospitals are district hospitals, multiply that by 11 and see the number of specialists you require. Mm -hmm. The annual output of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, which is the accredited college training specialist in this country, cannot match this. This is over 1,100 specialists we are talking about. They can't match it in within three years. Within in, a year or three two. three years, they cannot. Mm -hmm. If you go to the regional hospital, they are going to build three regional hospitals as part of this package, which is very helpful. We require 37 specialists in the regional hospital. Multiply that by three. By three. We require 38 senior specialists. So, we so the projects are all well and good, yes, but, excellent. but we may not have so, the kind of personnel we need. need to run them. So, so in terms of the district hospital, I, I saw a Ghana Health Service document that talks about a minimum they grade them grade yeah. A to D. Yes. The grade A is a minimum of some th 200 and something. Yeah. Uh, 200 and something personnel. Yeah. Can we deliver on that? And this so, is, I know, all categories yes. of personnel. So, well, the medical association, we are willing to support government to deliver on this. We know that it's usually difficult to get a full complement of staff to start anything. But we think that once the policy directive has been given by the president, his soldiers, let me put it in that term, should be given the marching orders to do the technical work as far as the human resource is concerned. We are available to provide guidance, to provide support and advice on how to get the human resource first and how to send them to do these places and how to get in them. You, if you look at even the requirement from the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency, he's a legal person and he knows the, the agency that regulates the setting up of a facility is this agency. To set up a district hospital, they need at least 150 professional nurses, 13 medical doctors for one district hospital before you can be accredited. This is a district hospital that has, that has a capacity to take referrals. So what are we going to do in 18 months? There's an emergency situation as far as the human resource is concerned. Our proposition is that in this September, we are having intake into the various schools, training institutions. Can we have this policy reflected there? So it means we have to also expand intake in intake. our schools in Equip order to this. meet yes. this much. So we may not meet it this year, we may not meet it next year, but at least in three years, four years, we may meet it. When these facilities are ready, we have to redistribute our staff. Because even if you take all those sitting at home, as you've mentioned, they cannot work in this facility alone. You can't take fresh recruits from any school and take them to a facility and say, go and work there. Then you're going to come turn that place into a very disastrous facility because they need experienced hands to guide them, they need seniors to guide them on the practice, and they need practice on the, on, on the field. So because of that, we are calling for a deliberate human resource policy, which is cutting across first at the institutions, training institutions, expansion in their capacity, expansion in the number of trainers, expansion in the number of intake students, then 
currently, how are we going to redistribute the human resources that we have? We must have an emergency policy on that. Then how are we going to act? Most of these facilities are located in rural areas. What is the story now? And I always cite my own district. I'm from Lambusi district in the Upper West region. The district is a bordering district to Burkina Faso. We have one polyclinic. The entire district has only one doctor. This doctor is involved in administrative work as the head of the hospital, acting head of the district, hospital, uh, the district health administration. He's the only person. We are a beneficiary to this 111. Over the years, people are not going there. So even when you trade the people, how are you going to get them there? And that is when, where we need policy to attract, to motivate, so that they can be retained. And some of these policies, it's not a matter of making noise or just speaking about it on TV or radio. It must be deliberate. Because these facilities are not being built in the cities. Very few are in the cities. And to the extent that they are in the rural areas, we need something to attract the doctors, the nurses there. Accommodation, road network, telecommunication, because if you post a young specialist to an area without telephone network, how is he going to survive? In my place, you get there, you are making a call before you realize your network is switched to Burkina Faso network. How are you handling this? So if okay. you've left your family in a crime, like how do you, so we need that deliberate policy on how to redistribute, but if government is committed to agenda 111, we love it, but they should be committed to the human resource of it. And okay. let us see that in the intake into training schools. Look, and I've been seeing some of your messages. Thank you very much. And I'll read them uh, subsequently. But we are still here with our discussion on Agenda 111 versus abandoned hospitals. Is it a case of priorities? We've been looking at the human resource implications of the project and i think the uh, deputy general secretary of the gma dr titus bayou has really opened our eyes to what the look ahead should be but let me bring in honorable suhini uh, uh, uh to bring in to weigh in on this conversation so now that i guess it's clear that mm. government says it has started some of these projects definitely they're going to be done concurrently any fears about the human resource element? Well, Jiva, it's not just uh, with the human resource element. I started by uh, making the point that if the intention is to improve healthcare, um, there's no one, I think, in this country who will be against, you know, such a move to increase the infrastructure stock uh, as far as health infrastructure is concerned. But when you see signs, that, you know, uh, points to the fact that this may be motivated by other considerations other than the need to improve healthcare. Then you need to raise those concerns. And I think that my brother here, uh, uh, Honorable, Honorable Joseph Pemka, Pemka mm -hmm. you know, points to some of those things. You know, the motivation is political, a death nail, nail on the NDC thing. So... If it is political, it is well and good. I mean, a government in power must do well to be to be to be to be uh, you know re-elected. But if that is the only motivation, then you will have it done out of the context that it should have been to lead to you know health you know uh, improvement. So, for example, um, he talks about the credit and. I think Doc should should be rest assured that the NDC in power in 2025 will not abandon any projects that were started by the NPP because you see it is not in our nature. And I like the example you gave Jifa, about uh, the N1. It wasn't just the N1. Even the Bui Power Authority, I mean the Bui Power uh, Dam when President Mahama was president and was going to commission it, he invited President Kufo. So it wasn't just President Mills who invited, you know, President Kufo to the N1. President Mahama also, as president, when he was going to commission the Bui Dam, acknowledged the fact that it was President Kufo who secured the funding for the construction of the Bui Dam. And so invited President, uh, you know, Kufo to, to be part of the commissioning. The problem we have had is this new patriotic party. That first is it of all, this administration, you this mean? administration, I mean, th that first of all set out to set an agenda against President Mahama and said he was one who did nothing. 
heard lectures across this country and pointed to how much money he borrowed and did nothing. And so, when you find them avoiding some of these projects, it's because it exposes the lie they told about him. The deliberate lies that they told about his administration is what must be continued with these actions that they engage in that in the end lead to the common person suffering and not enjoying the full benefits of these facilities that you know were constructed to improve healthcare. In fact, when President Akufado talks about Ghana being a health hub, a tourist destination for health purposes, we are six years late because that was the agenda. And that is why you have so many of those facilities across the country. That is the Eurojet project. Yes. So go that look, was, that yes. was the plan that for was a long plan. time. Yeah, for a long time. Go look at the uh, 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 University of Ghana Medical uh, School S center. center. People were taken to Israel and others to be trained yeah. for that purpose. Go and look at the Maritime Hospital in Tema. Those were the, that was the agenda to make Ghana a hub. And then it was supported by these district hospitals. Though it was not uh, 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 named or christened Agenda 111. Look at the number of district hospitals. In fact, in the then Brown and Hafo region alone, I can count up to about six district hospitals or seven that were constructed. The Western region. It was not, because governance wasn't about sloganeering like it has become today. My it was it was it was a more <laughs> serious business. My so the number of district hospitals that is why at the time that they were promising in 2016. Remember that you reject, at the time you they were promising. Can I finish? Can I finish? Yes. At the, can I finish? Remember at the that time that they were promising. At the time that they were promising, you know, district hospitals without hospitals, they knew that we had less than 45 districts without hospitals because there was that grand agenda to make sure that almost every area was covered in terms of health facilities. Indeed, even ministers and appointees of the president had to levy themselves at some point for the CHIPS compound. For the chips compound. Mm -hmm. That was a grand agenda to improve health facilities in this, in this country. And it was not just a stand alone. When my brother today boasts about they posted 2017 nurses, they posted 2018 nurses, and posted 2019 nurses. Did they post, post them to their farms or their homes? They posted them to facilities they didn't construct. Because we were training people and they were coming out of these facilities and needed places to work. And so those facilities we're not just built in isolation. And that is also but, linked. But it took some time for the facilities to be ready. To be hence, ready. Hence the backlog. Hence the backlog. That is being because you see, if the facilities you. were non-existent, they would not have been able to post them. Okay. But so, I, so, so the, point, the point has to be made that it was, it was not just an agenda to construct the facilities alone, but it was also you know, uh, 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 mindful of so the you, human resource you, you, you part of it. Please, please, please. No, please. I, I, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt him. Oh, and he didn't you, like it. You quickly hear him. <laughs> he didn't you like it respond. when I tried. It's okay. You let you well, say your quick point well, quickly. Are, are you saying that the reason for not posting those people was because there was no infrastructure? Or they Partly were not ready? So. It is Partly not so. correct. Partly so. It is not correct. Partly so. It is not you correct. See, so that is why I okay, didn't. So I'll allow you to tell <laughs> you us see, why. So you know, let me. It was partly the reason. And you see, okay, if no, I, no. For example. Isn't it also because there wasn't money to. Mm. There wasn't financial clearance? It is not. In fact, go and check the financial clearance. IMF. Go and no, check. No, 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 no. Go, it wasn't it's IMF. In fact, that is another lie that has been repeatedly told. The IMF freeze on employment in the public sector excluded the health sector and the education service okay. Okay. it was not part of it and he should go and check the clearance the financial clearance the date on that letter the financial clearance for 2017 posted go and check the the, the clearance the financial clearance came in 2016 okay but for the I, 2017 you know back to be posted okay so let me but draw your attention there's, a, there's, a, there's an important point i need to okay, make about okay. this human resource because yes, doc because has that's actually highlighted to... you know the the, the 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 grave situation that we are faced with and that is what again, you know, lends support to my earlier uh, uh, presumption that 
this may not just be targeted at health improvement, but just to engage in procurement, procurement politics. Because if it is targeted at improving health in general, you, we will not miss this very relevant, you know, part of the whole, you know. Well, I'll uh, be honest. I can't be sure if that bit has been missed because I guess I need to obviously. Put I, I am it going to point to you. That's why I said affairs, it's an important point I need health, to make. The health it's been missed. It's because it's, it's because it's, honorable it's, it's is It's been here. missed because you see. Right now, I, I told you about how there was that drive to make Ghana a hub, to construct all these beautiful health facilities that they have allowed, in some cases, to rot, bring in machines, you know, that we hitherto did not have, that they have allowed to rot. It was tied to the human resource angle, and that is why, President, under President Mahama, health training institutions, you know, we had an explosion of health training institutions around the country. Just look at when most of those health training institutions came about again that is how come the government at, at the time you know uh, uh, introduced the policy of removing the quota that they give to these health training institutions because the quota is limited the, the quota limits government's ability to train more people. That is the, the training allowance. The training allowance. So you so, took out the training allowances. I don't, I don't okay. even want to say we took out the trainer. We took out the quota. Okay. And the quota, taking out the quota meant that institutions that had the capacity to train a thousand people were no longer required to recruit, I mean, to admit only, say, 200. Because that's the, um, that, that, that's the number government can pay allowance to. Because if you can, and most of our facilities, there was a research done, and most of our, our facilities had, the training facilities, had the capacity to train more than they were training. So you had empty classrooms in those facilities because government could only pay 200 uh, uh, trainees allowance. Oh, so they are allowed, point, oh, no, they are allowed to admit oh, 200. Worry. So the policy, the policy was to take out the quota, <laughs> let the training institutions admit as many as they can because we have people passing from secondary school every day now you guarantee them jobs when they graduate by putting up these health institutions it is better than guaranteeing them allowance and not jobs okay i think that point has been made let me bring in dr bayo so dr bayo i know you respond to honorable suhini a bit but please uh, related to a question about these hospitals you are mentioning we have a lot of retired medical doctors medical uh, and nurses and other healthcare professionals once they are put out because of retirement i think those are opportunities we can tap into for some of these new hospitals who need experienced personnel they serve as mentees mentors for the mentees to train them up isn't that an option uh, well, it is an option. I mean, there have been calls for an extension of even the retirement age uh, for doctors in specialized areas where the skill is needed and also the need to bring in retiree. But before we would do that, it will be prudent to exhaust the ones that we are training because it will not be fair for someone who has finished medical school be at home whilst you bring in someone who has finished serving the nation. So even though if they'll be very useful as mentors, they'll be very useful to guide, and some of especially those who are just retiring in their early 60s, some are still very strong and can work. If they are willing to work, they could be brought on board, especially in the emergency situation, mm -hmm. when I call for an emergency po mm -hmm. uh, policy. If you're able to get all 111 hospitals ready and we are not getting the experienced hands, we could bring some of these people on board. But I need to emphasize that we must exhaust all the young ones we are training before we think of bringing in those people and we also I, I have, think a healthy balance yeah need, and we need we need work. to we need to balance it well because in the, in the medical profession uh at some level people are capable of teaching of guiding but may not be capable of, of the surgery work. yes because yeah. of the dexterity of their hands and all mm -hmm. so all that has to be brought into into play but i think that if we deliberately plan as a nation we should be able to overcome this hurdle of the human resource. Tell I, us a bit about the GMA proposal you, you mentioned. Yes. yes. So I should say that the GMA is working with the Ministry of Health now to come up with a policy um, to attract and retain healthcare workers in the rural areas, uh, those already in the system. As far as Agenda 111 is concerned, we are proposing that we are willing to support government with policy guidance and development on how to get people first at the point of intake, we are saying that these training institutions have quotas. 
So remove the quota. Identify people who would not have made the admission this year, not because they are not qualified, but because their, the space was limited and because of quota. Now let their admission into schools be linked to a particular health facility. In other words, bond these people, let them sign an agreement that, look, I'm getting admission to this nursing school, I had missed the admission for this year, I'm not going to stay at home, but I'm coming in. When I finish, I'm going to serve in this facility. So they already know the facility they'll be serving in on breaks, they can go and do attachment there. That is one sure way of increasing the staff strength and permanently having them there. When it comes to specialist intake, we have the same thing. In the case of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, the capacity to train currently has been restricted based on the teaching hospitals. We are asking for decentralization of the training. Get a lot of trainers. Decentralize them. Let all regional hospitals be involved in training. That will require a cross-sectorial collaboration with the military or the Air Force, and I'm going to explain why, with the Ministry of Transport, with the Ministry of uh, Housing. You will need to move consultants and specialists from Kolebu, from 37, from Konfanochi, to across the country to train people. So instead of getting all the doctors to come to only these few facilities to train, which will restrict how many people you can take, because there's only a number of specialists in training you can have per team. If I have seven residents to train in Kolebu, it will mean that they will suffer in the amount of skills they will get. So instead of bringing them here, keep some at Borgatanga Regional Hospital. Draw a rota for consultants like me and my colleagues and tell you, Dr. Bayo, you are in charge of Upper East Regional Hospital. Monthly, we'll fly you in in a week. Go there, operate with the doctors who are there, guide them through and train them there. This should be a proper contractual agreement and get all consultants on board. If this is done, immediately the training intake will blossom. It will increase in terms of numbers. Then we are going to get specialists trained. The other thing is that if you train the people where they work, the tendency for them to relocate to Accra is low. But if you bring someone to Accra for five-year training, in the course of that time, the person has maybe married, has kid, kids have begun school, how does that person relocate completely to a rural area to train? So we are saying that we need that kind of comprehensive policy for training at all levels. And this should be backed by proper motivation of the staff when they are fully trained. Motivation because these people are going to be sacrificing a lot. So what do they get in return? Are we giving them some special allowances? Are we giving them something for movement, vehicles where they are, accommodation? How do they make up for their kids' school? If you send one, someone to a village somewhere, the person immediately is going to keep two homes because you have to keep your family in the city so that the kids can go to school whilst you labor in the village. How am I compensated for that? In the village, there's no additional hospital for you to do part-time practice. All your effort is at the district hospital. How are you compensated for that? Your colleague in Kumasi, after working at Konfanochi, for her, to do locum elsewhere. his, his uh, yeah. dedicated time, will have time to do locum somewhere. How do you compensate the, someone, the person at uh, uh, Hamili? or the person at uh, where, uh, where, somewhere. Where yes. one of these hospitals, hospitals is. is. How do you compensate that person? Because the person is lacking all of this. And they work around the clock mm -hmm. because they are few. Yeah. So that motivation package, until we do that, any rhetoric of I've posted 10 doctors, I've recruited 60,000 nurses, will amount to nothing. The inequitable distribution will remain because it then becomes market forces. And if it's market forces, everybody will go to where they get the highest dividend. Why should I go and sacrifice somewhere? And I hear people say, oh, the doctor should be willing to sacrifice. The nurses should be willing to sacrifice. Then every profession must be willing to sacrifice. The legal profession. How many lawyers are in the Upper East? The Hippocratic Oath. How many are in the Upper East? They are serving somewhere. The Hippocratic Oath <laughs> did not sentence us to poverty. It did not yeah, sentence us. Okay, My so senior brother. I, I like that. You know? I think that's a good, that's a good way to yeah, So I'm about to pass. You are very, on the floor. You are, you are making a very, very important point. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> I, know, I think it's, it, very, it very gives very us point. a lot for reflection. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have, I have, I have, I, I think I agree with you. If, if there's anything beyond 100%, I agree with you. <laughs> you know, the, the, to be honest with you. But, the, but you the, did the, politics with the, yeah. the quotas. No, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. You see. You will come back to that. My brother. Yes, sir. 
you were talking about this profession distribution of professionals and even you, you went to talk about lawyers you uh, but you are a lawyer to <laughs> former deputy attorney general so how many for a long for the longest time you, honorable Ambrose jerry was one of the few lawyers operating in the upper, upper west, west. Let, me, let me make this very clear immediately from law school i went back to upper east yes you did Good. Let me make it very clear. Yeah. And I, I came from and as AG, upper east to become as AG, AG, AG. As AG, how did you change the distribution? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm making things very clear. So I am not part of the Suyinis who have remained in Accra. Oh, so. oh, I am not part. Oh. I went back and I have said, I said, in fact, after first degree, I went back to teach there. Then I came and did law. I went back there to serve. Okay. So I have all along been serving, been even as I speak. <laughs> I've gone to do my chambers there again. Great. So, for me, well, I, 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 well, so well, well, it's not an issue at Compared to me, compared see, to me, me I never left. <laughs> I stayed there, educated myself there, and did everything there. I was actually in sixth form when he was here. It was, it was my junior. <laughs> <laughs> we have in something. You are in the same school. school. And, and he did that something, I'll tell you. He did something that I'll tell you. You know, but, but the most serious note, you see, the point he was making about distribution of health personnel, I spoke about it. You have a situation where you, people are posted on the notice board, you go and see their names. The date of reporting is over, you go and they are not at post. You ask and they've been reposted. What is the reason? And he's spoken about it extensively. Mm -hmm. We have to deliberately put a policy in place to discriminate in their favor, mm -hmm. to attract mm -hmm. them to stay. Yeah. That one, I, I agree call it with positive you. discrimination. Yeah, mm -hmm. positive. We have to. If you are in Accra and you have everything here and the person is up there or the person is in that rural area and he's, he's not getting the facilities you have here, there must be something that will compensate for that difference. Yeah. That I totally agree. And we have to do it in a manner that will retain them yes. for them to stay and work. But we're talking about the quota system. Yes. It will be impossible, and Dr. News, to open the doors for every qualified person to go and read medicine or to go and read uh, nursing. It Why? is impossible. You can't have it. Why? It, it doesn't exist anywhere. No. It doesn't. There must be a criteria to select some. Ah, you said qualified. Let me, let me, yes. All qualified persons cannot have access to read. It is impossible. I'm telling you this. But, but you can you can tweak that to your needs. Yes. Based exactly. on how many The reason I'm saying this need. is that, for example, yeah. you're talking about nursing. Yeah. You know that they, 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 they do a lot of clinicals. Yes. And they need a hospital to do this. Yes. If you go and there's a nursing training college at Timpani and there's no hospital, where are the people going to do the clinicals to become good professionals? Mm. So all those things are to be taken into consideration. There was a situation, dog, in 2016, where a school up north admitted close to 1,000 people to read uh, nursing. And there was no facility for them to do clinicals and all that. At the end of the day, you are training people to come and man a human institution and take care of humans. And then you are, you are engaging them to become theoreticians and all that, mm. so that they come out and pour out theory. No, this work that must... Can, that cannot work. It cannot work. No. They, so have, it, they, they need a skill. Yes. It's a gamut of things. To be able to increase the intake, you must expand the, 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 the infrastructure, infrastructure yeah. and then also get the professionals who will train them. Yes. And even this, these hospitals we are talking about will help. Yes. If you have the 111 in place, these people will the do their clinicals issue. in those hospitals. It will help. Long term. But short term, you have to regulate it. Painfully, they go through interviews. And dog knows. They go through interviews. Some are selected. Others are not selected. Some even attend interviews three, three different years and they are not selected and all that. It's unfortunate. But there must be a criteria for selecting people to go and uh, pursue these professions. Again, I, the motivation bit is what I'm coming back to, and, and just to conclude in a minute. You see, I... I so we I, have just uh, 30 seconds for you on Once that. upon a time, I, I, I saw some, some uh, in a particular district, they said they were going to provide a bungalow for you, they will get you a vehicle, and they will give you some motivation. There was a district, I don't remember specifically. And then that will be a motivation for any doctor who agrees and accepts to, to be posted to their place. And I think that even districts yeah. can initiate these things. District assemblies can initiate mm -hmm. these things mm -hmm. to retain them, because the local beneficiaries are the assemblies, Yes. in the end. Mm -hmm. Because if we are relying only on central government because of budgetary constraints and all that, they may not be able to. So we can motivate the district assemblies to make allocations to motivate these persons Come and stay. And they can even sponsor. 
You take people to the medical school and pay their fees and bond them to come and serve you for a number of years. We can do all those so things. So we should just come up with innovative ways, ways of handling ways the situation. To do that. All right. And uh, this is where we have to end our show. I want to oh, thank oh. our guests, uh, <laughs> Alassane Suhini, MP Tamale North, uh, Honorable Joseph Pemka, former Deputy Attorney General, and former MP for Timpani. We'll see if you're going to contest again. And Dr. <laughs> Titus Bayou, uh, Deputy General Secretary, Ghana Medical Association. Many thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to all of you who sent me tweets, those of you who sent us text messages as well. Key Points has been coming to you live from TV3 Studios as well as from 3FM 92.7 and on 3news.com. My name is Jifa Bampo. Thank you for watching.